वेलकम टू यतीम खाना एंड मदरसा अंजुमन खैरुल इस्लाम पूना कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स साइंस एंड कॉमर्स कैंप पुणे वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आरिफ तांबोली वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द टॉपिक व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स आर आई स्नेल्स लॉ क्रिटिकल एंगल थीटा सी एंड टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन दैट इज टी आई आर so all these four parameters are very important through the frame of reference of fiber optic communication because in fiber optic communication a ray of light is passed through a medium and that medium is having a particular refractive index therefore refractive index means what that is very much essential to understand then when the ray of light is lodged into a one particular refractive index it gets reflected back it gets reflected back into the same medium if and only if the refractive index of that medium is greater than the refractive index of another medium and uh, that is given by the snell's law so snell's law and refractive index are related to each other then after reflecting back the ray will come into the same medium and some portion of the ray will not come into the same medium and it will get refracted and it will get refracted and if the refraction is there then there is a loss in the light signal when there is a loss in the light signal and to avoid the refraction we must study the critical angle so there is one particular particular angle at which refraction becomes zero and reflection becomes maximum and in this way if that happens then the ray of light propagates through entire length of fiber optic cable by the principle of total internal reflection and therefore all these four parameters are very much related to each other and let us study one by one so first of all now let us try to understand that what is a fiber optic cable so fiber optic cable consists of core as a one part and core is made by a glass of particular refractive index fiber optic cable consists of what core as a one part and core is made by a glass material of particular refractive index the core is surrounded by cladding the core is surrounded by cladding you can see here all 360 degree so core is surrounded by cladding and cladding is also made by glass material of particular refractive index and as i just told you 2 minutes before always the ray of light is launch always the ray of light is launch or focus into the core medium into the core medium and this ray of light will reflect and this ray of light will reflect from the junction of core and cladding and come back to the core medium only and come back to the core medium only if and only if the refractive index of core is greater than refractive index of cladding and third part of fiber optic cable is protective jacket is protective jacket so these two things are very much important core which is made from glass material of refractive index let us say n1 n is the symbol which is used for refractive index n1 cladding is a material which is surrounded on core and cladding is also made by a glass material let us say refractive index n2 and if you want to have a reflection maximum if you want to have a reflection maximum means ray of light launch into the core should come back into the core medium only then refractive index of core must be greater than the refractive index of cladding and this is whatever i explain you we are going to study now slowly slowly so here 
fiber optic cable consists of core and cladding and the medium through which the light signal passes is core and the medium through which light signal passes is core and remember this light signal passes due to multiple reflections due to multiple reflections at the junction of core and cladding and that multiple reflection is also called as total internal reflection so here fiber optic cable consists of core and cladding and the medium through which the light signal passes is core always we launch always we launch the ray of light into core into core core as well as cladding are made from glass material of particular refractive index core as well as cladding are made from glass material of particular refractive index the refractive index is indicated by the symbol n of course small n and refractive index ri hence for gold right ri refractive index of core material n1 is greater than refractive index of cladding material n2 this is important factor core materials refractive index is always greater than cladding materials refractive index n2 due to n1 greater than n2 n1 is the refractive index of core n2 is the refractive index of cladding cladding is surrounded by core cladding is sorry core is surrounded by cladding core is this is the core core is surrounded by the cladding so in this way here cladding's refractive index n2 is less core's refractive index n1 is greater and due to this fact the the ray reflects at the junction of core and cladding and due to this fact the ray reflects at the junction of core and cladding and reflected ray will come back into the core medium and reflected ray will come back into the core medium and this happens because of n1 greater than n2 so here this ray of light which are launched into the core and the core is surrounded by the cladding at the junction of core and cladding this ray will reflect back into the core medium this ray will reflect back into the core medium because of n1 that is refractive index of core greater than n2 that is refractive index of cladding and reflection takes place number 3 the ray of light is focused oblique launch into the core of the fiber such that refraction into cladding is zero so here refraction this is be careful it is not a reflection it is a refraction because some part of the ray of light will get refracted and some will get reflected back into the core so here the ray of light is focused oblique launch into the core of fiber such that refraction into cladding is zero so there should not be refraction so that the light energy will not get lost so refraction into cladding is zero and reflection in core is maximum and reflection core is maximum we want maximum reflection so our light energy should not get wasted if this happens then the ray of light then ray of light satisfies the condition of critical angle and if this happens means what refraction must be zero reflection must be maximum and reflection means what at the junction of core and cladding the ray come back into the core medium because n1 is greater than n2 now what do we mean by the refractive index because this everything depends on what refractive index why the ray is again why the ray is reflected back into the core medium why the ray is reflected back into the core medium because refractive index of core is greater than the refractive index of cladding then what do we mean by the refractive index refractive index is very important parameter and it is ratio of speed of light in free space 
and it is a ratio of speed of light in free space to the speed of light in a particular medium. So it is a very simple definition. It is the ratio of for speed of light in free space to the speed of light in a particular medium. Particular medium means a glass medium of refractive uh, of particular material you can say and that speed of light if you calculate then you can calculate the refractive index. So here refractive index is indicated by the symbol small n. So Ri means refractive index is equal to speed of light in free space divided by speed of light in a particular medium. Speed of light in free space divided by speed of light in particular medium. Therefore it is said that here you see N0 refractive index N0 means refractive index of air. So refractive index of air normally in air the speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Normally in air the speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second and therefore this ratio will come 1 and that is why it is said N0 is equal to refractive index of air because speed of light in free space means that is air divided by speed of light in a particular medium means we are calculating the refractive index of air. So here particular medium means air will be there therefore this ratio will come 1. But if you talk about refractive index of glass it is something 1.5, refractive index of diamond 2.417, refractive index of water 1.333. In this way refractive index is a simple definition. Refractive index is a ratio of speed of light in free space to the speed of light in a particular medium. So here a glass we have taken as a 1.5 and if you change the material of the glass, if you change the material of the glass then this refractive index can also be changed and we are going to see the different types of the materials which are used for manufacturing the glass because we want core and cladding made from different material. We want core and cladding made from different material otherwise if you make made the core, core and cladding of the same material and having the same refractive index then reflection will not take place. Reflection will not take place and our entire fiber optic communication will not get succeeded. So here let us proceed now. Let us consider that there is a one medium with refractive index Ri means equal to N1. Let us consider there is one medium with Ri refractive index equal to N1 and this medium is marked by with certain color. You can see this uh, particular medium and here let us consider another medium medium 2 here with refractive index Ri equal to N2. So you have two medium one is the above this suppose this is your uh, central line above the central line that is junction here above the junction there is medium 2 and below the junction there is medium 1. So medium 1 is having Ri means refractive index N1. Medium 2 is having Ri means refractive index N2 and we have given here N1 is greater than N2. N1 is greater than N2. Now when you say that this is the junction of two medium, this is the junction of two medium N1 and N2. Medium 1 is N1 refractive index, medium 2 is N2 refractive index. Now what we will do it here? We will launch the incident ray. We will launch the incidence ray here at any point on the junction. So normally we selected the center point. We will launch the incidence ray at the any point on the junction and we have selected the center point of this uh, line. So when you launch the ray at the junction of medium M1 and medium 2 having Ri N1 and N2 but N1 is greater than N2. Therefore as we discussed earlier the ray of light when it gets strike at the junction the ray of light when it gets strike at the junction then that ray of light will reflected back into the same medium then that ray of light will get reflected back. So this is a reflected ray into the same medium because N1 is greater than N2. 
but some part of that light but some part of that incidence light will be refracted will be refracted into medium 2 will be refracted into medium 2 and this light which is refracted is our loss of light energy is our loss of light energy so here let us consider theta 1 let us consider theta 1 is the angle of incidence ray angle of incidence ray with the normal with the normal because the point at which we are going to focus the point at which we are going to focus the incidence ray at the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 at that point we are going to draw the normal and I think so all of you know that normal is perpendicular normal is perpendicular to the junction means here medium 1 and medium 2 therefore theta 1 if you consider as the angle of incidence ray angle between the normal and incidence ray then theta 2 will be the angle between the normal and refracted ray theta 2 will be the angle between the normal and refracted ray so this is uh, you have to consider that angle is always in between normal and refracted ray or incident ray now what is our problem problem is this refracted ray should not be there refraction refraction should not be there therefore what we'll try to do it this refracted ray we will try to bend it in downward direction we'll try to bend it in downward direction and we'll try to bring that refracted ray we'll try to bring that refracted ray at least at the boundary or at the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 at least at the boundary or at the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 therefore when it will happen we'll try to bend the refracted ray so that it should not get lost into the medium second and here to bend that ray in downward direction what you should do you should increase theta 1 you should increase theta 1 because theta 1 is the angle between incident ray and normal so when theta 1 is increased look at this theta 2 will also increase theta 2 will also increase and then at one particular angle of theta 1 at one particular angle of theta 1 that is angle between incident ray and normal you will get succeeded in having theta 2 in having theta 2 equal to 90 degree theta 2 equal to 90 degree and then you can say that refracted ray is now traveling along the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 and if you say medium 1 as a core and medium 2 as a cladding if you say medium 1 as a core having high refractive index and medium 2 as a cladding having low refractive index then this junction will be the junction of core and cladding and then refracted ray will travel along the junction of core and cladding and our energy will not get loss light energy will not get loss so to achieve that there should be a particular angle of incident ray with the normal and that particular angle of the incident ray with the normal at which refracted ray at which refracted ray travels along the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 or refracted ray travels along the junction of core and cladding if you say medium 1 as a core and medium 2 as a cladding then at that particular angle where theta 2 is equal to 90 degree where theta 2 equal to 90 degree refraction is zero what you will say refraction is zero there is no refraction and when you say refraction is zero then you can say that reflection is maximum reflection is maximum and that particular angle is called critical angle is called critical angle and if the incident ray and if the incident ray incidence ray actually it is incidence ray satisfies that angle which is called critical angle then the reflection will be maximum reflection will be maximum and refraction will be zero so this diagram is very important and now here what we have done 
we have considered n1 as a refractive index of this medium and this angle theta 1 with the normal and therefore here it is written n1 sin theta 1 here this is a second medium here there is a normal common to the uh, medium 1 and medium 2 means common means perpendicular to the medium 1 and medium 2 theta 2 is the angle between refracted ray and normal theta 2 is the angle between refracted ray and normal now we want to increase theta 2 to the extent of 90 degree such that refraction will be zero such that refraction will be zero and here we have written n2 sin theta 2 n2 sin theta 2 and according to snell's law according to snell's law always n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 that is snell's law so we are going to write that equation now here see n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 this is Snell's law. Now whatever I explain you same thing is written over here as shown above theta 1 is the angle between incident ray and normal of material having refractive index n1 having refractive index n1 lower means material lower material this is upper and this is lower. So, N1 is not lower, N1 is higher. So, like that it is here. If you are confusing, then uh, uh, we will remove that. So, here it is uh, N1 and uh, N2 that material we will remove because uh, that will create a confusions and uh, we don't want the confusions. So, here as shown above, theta 1 is the angle between the incident ray and the normal of material having refractive index N1. Theta 2 is the angle between the refracted ray and normal of material having Ri N2. So, theta 2 is the angle between refracted ray and the normal of material having refractive index N2, having Ri N2. So, this is there. Then, when theta 1 is increased, when theta 1 is increased, at that time theta 2 also increased and refraction is reduced and refraction is reduced that is what i said you we don't want any refraction therefore this ray should come back into this medium it if it is not coming back into this medium refracted ray at least it should come along the junction of two medium along the junction of two medium therefore when theta 1 is increased theta 2 also increased and when theta 1 is increased and theta 2 is also increased and refraction is reduced. If the angle of refracted ray is 90 degree, if the angle of refracted ray is 90 degree means here it, if that ray comes to this junction of core and cladding or medium 1 and medium 2, then that angle will be 90 degree. If the, if the angle of refracted ray is 90 degree, in that case, refraction is zero in that case refraction is zero and reflection is maximum as shown below and reflection is maximum as shown below and that is what i explain you now look at here medium second and medium one medium one is having ri refractive index n1 medium two is having ri refractive index n2 incident ray is launch incident ray is launch at the junction of two medium at any point you can launch we have taken at the center and when you launch the incident ray at the junction of two medium medium one is having ri greater than the medium two therefore maximum reflection will take place and ray will come back into the same medium and the ray will come back into the same medium now we have applied or we have focused this incident ray with certain angle theta 1 such that at that time theta 2 is equal to 90 degree. See here. Refracted ray now traveling along the junction of medium 1 and medium 2. This is the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 horizontal line. Now refracted ray is traveling along the junction of along the junction of medium 1 and medium 2 and therefore it is said that refraction is zero. It is said that refraction is zero. And this angle theta 1 at which theta 2 becomes 90 degree. 
this angle theta 1 at which theta 2 becomes 90 degree is called critical angle and now here we will apply the Snell's law and we can write the equation. So now here what will happen here the problem is what if I just talk about this the ray will come back into the same medium the incident ray will come back into the same medium because number one this in refractive index is greater than that number two you have launched the ray number two you have launched the ray or focus the ray such that refraction is zero such that refraction is zero means angle of refracted ray along with normal is 90 degree when the refraction will be zero if the angle of refracted ray with the normal is 90 degree then refraction is zero so here you have taken that care now in this diagram and therefore here at that particular angle theta 1 the refraction is zero now here if if i just talk about this medium and that medium this ray will come back into the same medium that is maximum reflection that is maximum reflection and it will go somewhere down and it will go somewhere down therefore what do i have done here see here so this is some now the left hand side only you look it this n1 we have launched the incident ray then it bends and it goes to the junction of core and cladding it goes to the junction of core and cladding so this upper part now we are calling as a cladding lower part we are cladding calling as a core core is having refractive index n1 cladding is having refractive index n2 and here what we have taken care this incident ray we have launched such that it having a particular angle with the normal is having a particular angle with the normal that is theta 1 such that theta 2 equal to 90 degree theta 2 equal to 90 degree and therefore maximum reflection will be there refraction is zero maximum reflection will be there refraction is zero so we have not written this here as a reflected ray so you can understand now this ray will come back here again out but if i put here some medium this medium only then this ray will again get strike at the junction of this n1 and then n2 and then again it will go back into the same medium and then again it will go back into same medium otherwise here this reflected ray is coming out from this n1 reflected ray is coming out from this n1 and see here now what we have done on the right hand side now you see here here is the n2 cladding here is again n2 cladding so what we have done this ray which was coming out from n1 medium we have stopped that ray here only and force that ray again go into the same medium and force that ray again go into the same medium by connecting here a same refractive index material n2 by connecting here a same refractive index material n2 so a piece of same refractive index material is taken over here and therefore you will understand that now the core is surrounded by cladding the core is surrounded by cladding at the upper side of the core also there is a cladding and at the lower side of the core is also there is a cladding and in this way now here this ray if it satisfies the condition of theta 2 equal to 90 degree that is called critical angle condition when theta 2 equal to 90 degree when theta 1 is having a particular angle theta 1 is having a particular angle at that time theta 2 is equal to 90 degree and then it is said that refraction is zero zero reflection is maximum and then it will come again into the same medium again you connected here about n2 cladding then again it will get reflected back and here again there is a cladding then again it is reflected back and in this way due to total internal reflection the ray travels through entire length of fiber optic cable or through entire length of core material and this is very important factor that why the Snell's law is used and here now let us see here this is core the core is surrounded by cladding means on the top side up upper side of the core also there is a cladding and on the lower side of the core again there is a cladding so now this is the axis of the fiber this is the axis of the fiber and we have launched the ray into the fiber we have launched the ray into the fiber but whenever we launch the ray into the fiber remember 
it is launched into the core medium it is launched into the core medium so we have launched the ray into the fiber and it is launched into the core medium n1 of the core is greater than n2 of cladding that is the condition otherwise reflection will not be maximum secondly when the ray is launched into the fiber optic cable it is launched at the what core material now when you are launching the ray into the core here on the left hand side of the core what is there there is air so air acts as a one medium and core acts as a second medium air acts as a one medium and core acts as a second medium therefore here when you launch the ray at that time axis of the fiber try to understand axis of the fiber is a normal because this is one medium and this is another medium and normal is in between two medium here medium second and medium one this is the normal now here when you launch the ray into the core of the fiber on the left hand side there is air on the right hand side there is a core material therefore axis of the fiber will act as a normal and therefore theta one is the angle of incident ray theta one is the angle of incident ray along with normal or along with the axis of the fiber now when this ray enters into the second medium that is medium of core the ray bends the ray gets bent and when it get bent now this ray is going to strike at the junction of core and cladding so this is the junction of what core and cladding now core is having a refractive index n1 cladding is having refractive index n2 n1 is greater than n2 therefore at the junction when this ray gets strike this ray will reflect it back this ray will reflect it back and what care we have taken we have taken the care that this theta one should be such that this theta one should be such that the angle of refracted ray into the cladding material the angle of refracted ray into the cladding material should be 90 degree should be 90 degree that care we have taken and that's why theta one is said as a critical angle if angle of refracted ray into cladding is 90 degree angle of refracted ray into cladding is 90 degree and this angle is called theta c that is a critical angle this angle is called theta c otherwise see here if suppose this theta one is not allowing this ray to refract with angle 90 degree to refract with angle 90 degree then this angle will be something different then this angle will be something different and this will not be theta c therefore let us consider that this theta one is an angle such that when the ray enters into the core material and gets strike at the junction of core and cladding gets strike at the junction of core and cladding at that time the refracted ray is having an angle with the normal as a 90 degree therefore refraction is zero and reflection is maximum and that angle is called critical angle theta c and here whatever i have explained you it is given here as shown above ray of light is launched into the core of fiber optic cable the ray of light is launched into the core of the fiber optic cable through air having ri n0 equal to 1 because refractive index of air is what 1 so here the ray of light is launched into core of the fiber cable into core of the fiber optic cable through air because left hand side material is what air through air having ri equal to n0 n0 equal to 1 here theta 1 is the angle between the incidence ray and normal that is axis of fiber optic cable that is what i have explained you the axis of the fiber optic cable is nothing but normal of air as a one medium and core as a second medium so here axis of fiber optic cable because the air act as one ri refractive index material on lhs and core acts as core of foc acts as second refractive index material on rhs so here on lhs air is there and on rhs core material is there so here this is the junction 
this is the junction and this is the normal to that junction that is the axis of the fiber so it is very simple if you understand it when ray enters into fiber when ray enters into fiber at that time it gets bent and strikes at the junction of core and cladding when this ray enters into the fiber it get bent why bending is there because this refractive index is different coarse refractive index is different so it gets bent and it gets strike at the junction of core and cladding so this is a core and this is a cladding and when it gets strike at the junction of core and cladding we have taken the care that refraction is zero and reflection is maximum therefore ray will come back into the same medium of the core because n1 is greater than n2 now when it is coming back into the same medium of the core see what happens here again there is a cladding because core is surrounded by cladding so when this ray comes again back into the medium and gets strike at the junction of core and cladding then again the ray will get reflected back and come back into the same medium of the core and then again there will be reflection and in this way the ray of light will propagate through entire length of the cable means through entire co core material with the help of total internal reflection with the help of total internal reflection so here when the ray enters into fiber at that time it gets bent and strikes at the junction of core and cladding the second normal is drawn at the junction of core and cladding first normal is what first normal is the axis of the fiber of cable second normal is at the junction of core and cladding because normal is always drawn at the junction of two materials and the second normal is at the junction of core and cladding the second normal is drawn at the junction of core and cladding apply snell's law at the junction of core and cladding apply snell's law at the junction of core and cladding having refractive index and n1 and n2 respectively so refractive index of core is n1 and refractive index of core is uh, sorry cladding is n2 so if you apply the snell's law at the junction of core and cladding if you apply the snell's law at the junction of core and cladding then you can write the equation n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 n1 is the refractive index of core n2 is the refractive index of cladding sin theta 1 and sin theta 2 so theta 1 is what angle theta 1 is the angle of incidence ray with the normal theta 1 is the angle of incidence ray with the normal therefore this theta 1 this theta 1 will be sin theta 1 and then theta 2 means here theta 2 will be your sin theta 2 means um, this theta 2 is uh, refracted rays angle theta 2 is the angle of refracted ray so if the theta 2 is 90 degree then what will happen sin 90 is equal to 1 so n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 so n2 is the refractive index of cladding material and this ray is what not refracted refraction is zero this ray is not refracted refraction is zero because angle of that theta 1 and this theta 2 theta 2 is 90 degree therefore the ray is what reflected back into the medium 100 percent and therefore here you can write that equation sin n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 if theta 2 is equal to 90 degree then sin 90 equal to 1 sin 90 equal to 1 and then you can write n1 sin theta 1 here n1 we have taken on this side theta 2 is equal to 90 degree sin theta 2 equal to 90 means 1 therefore n2 upon n1 therefore sin theta 1 equal to n2 upon n1 very simple theta 1 equal to sin inverse of n2 upon n1 theta 1 equal to sin inverse of n2 upon n1 and this theta 1 at which theta 2 becomes 90 degree this theta 1 at which theta 2 becomes 90 degree this theta 1 at which theta 2 means angle of refracted ray becomes 90 degree is called critical angle is called critical angle theta 1 is called as critical angle theta c because at 90 degree refraction is zero and reflection is maximum 
at 90 degree of refracted ray of course refraction is zero and reflection is maximum critical angle equal to theta c equal to critical angle equal to theta c equal to sine inverse of n2 upon n1 because here sine theta 1 equal to n2 upon n1 therefore theta 1 equal to sine inverse of n2 upon n1 and this theta 1 is the critical angle theta c if incident ray satisfies this condition then that ray then that ray propagates by the principle of total internal reflection then that ray propagates by the principle of total internal reflection and this is the derivation for tir when the angle of incident ray is greater than or equal to the critical angle theta c when the angle of incidence ray is greater than or equal to critical angle theta c then the ray of light is totally reflected back into the core this phenomena is called as total internal reflection if theta 2 is equal to 90 degree then only the ray of light theta 2 over here is 90 degree then the ray of light will get pass means refracted ray will pass along the junction of core and cladding and therefore refraction is zero reflection is maximum and that particular angle is called your theta c and this phenomena is called as total internal reflection this phenomena of total internal reflection is used to guide to guide the ray of light in optic fiber cable to guide the ray of light in optic fiber cable as explained above if incidence ray satisfies the condition of critical angle then that ray propagates through the entire length of foc fiber optic cable due to total internal reflection and this is the what we can say now the same diagram is drawn with three dimension means core is shown uh, cylindrical part cladding is also shown cylindrical part axis of the fiber is here here on the left hand side there is a air on the right hand side there is a core material ray of light is launched into the cores here ray of light is launched into the core so normally it is taken uh, center material of the core and this theta one is the what theta one is the angle between the axis of the fiber theta one is the angle between the axis of the fiber and incident ray upon entering into the core medium upon entering into the core medium incident ray gets bent and gets strikes at the junction of core and cladding so cladding ri n2 core ri n1 and then at the junction of core and cladding we have drawn the normal then this ray when it strikes at the junction of core and cladding refracted ray angle theta 2 is 90 degree refracted ray angle theta 2 is 90 degree and that refracted ray travels along the junction of core and cladding therefore reflection is maximum and refraction is zero so here refracted ray is not shown at all because it is traveling along the junction of core and cladding so this is there and then you can launch not only one ray not necessary at the center here only you can launch the ray somewhat like this also but you must launch the ray into core only but you must launch the ray into core only and then when this launch this ray green ray now it is going to strike little bit longer distance and but doesn't matter when it is going to strike little bit longer distance it is striking at the junction of core and cladding only and when it strikes at the junction of core and cladding again if the refracted ray angle is 90 degree again if the refracted ray angle is 90 degree then refraction is zero reflection is maximum and this green ray will also travel with the principle of total internal reflection and this is the already we have seen the first ray so now it is very important to understand the core is surrounded by the cladding core is surrounded by the cladding and this is the front view diagram this is the front view diagram and this is you can say that cylindrical diagram cylindrical diagram and this is the front view diagram and with this what i will do today i will declare that uh, this uh, topic of what uh, total internal reflection is over and in the next lecture then i will explain you 
the different types of the materials used for manufacturing the core and cladding of course that is a glass material with different refractive index indices and manufacturing material not only but there are manufacturing techniques also and that manufacturing techniques also we have to just study the names in the form of names so with this i will conclude that today we have completed the refractive index ri of core and cladding what do we mean by the refractive index then snell's law then total internal reflection and theta c that is critical angle so theta c is very important critical angle is very important without satisfying the condition of theta c that is critical angle it is not possible to propagate the ray of light through the core due to total internal reflection and that is the conclusion thank you very much you can watch the video again and you can get your concepts clear this is the advantage of this technology